Welcome everyone to the One You Man intersection. We're stepping into the reconnection into John 17, Love and Unity, and the One You Man is becoming a reality. I just uh, want to thank Audrey for the last hour uh, and a blessing on you, dear sister. A beautiful, just a beautiful spirit of rest and peace as I joined you in for a few minutes in that last hour and a blessing upon you and uh, the tabernacle. Hallelujah. And you can find actually the tabernacle book um, on the Romans 911 website. Well, beloved, I'm excited tonight because uh, we're, we're uh, introducing a, a slightly new focus um, in the One You Man intersection. Um, this, I think this coming August will be five years uh, that we've been praying uh, in and through the One New Man intersection. And this is our third year in the uh, be beginning of our third year in the global family of prayer. And we felt as we came towards the end of last year, we felt like a new direction um, for us um, because the Lord is beginning to raise up different ministry focuses. Remember in Romans 911 teachings, we talk about these all the different pieces coming together to form the whole picture and the image of what God is doing in this hour. And it will require a great place of, of love and unity and deference to the rest of the body um, because we are really going to need each other to see the whole picture and to be able to move into it. And so um, uh, we have moved the Romans 911 prayer focus. We're actually naming it. Uh, you'll find it in the next couple of weeks on the on, on the Reconnecting Ministry website uh, an additional link called the Romans 911 Project Watch. It's basically it's going to be the same uh, hour of the One Human Intersection. But as we mentioned to you over the last couple of weeks, we have the Return Israel joining us on the second. Uh, Thursday of each month, uh, Bob has, has teamed up with uh, it, some fellow brethren, Earl Clampett and Don Evelson, um, uh, with a kingdom calling focus out on the West Coast. And then we'll still have uh, uh, regional leaders such as Audrey and Gurney and Harriet and Paul uh, leading us um, in uh, different hours. And then also we will have uh, guest hosts uh, throughout throughout the year. So um, and so, what I wanted to focus on tonight, um, we're still going to pretty much have a discussion for twenty minutes Q and A, and then at the bottom of the hour we'll begin to move into prayer focuses into the things that we're talking about. But um, it, it's going to take on a slightly different position because we also want to be praying into the ministry pieces that the Lord is raising up during this hour to really go forth. And so just for a minute, I want to, I want to share my screen. Um, can everyone see the uh, Romans 911 website here? Here we go. Um, we are really working on core creating the Romans 911 website to be like a, a resource center for the restoration in the one you man. And so we've made some changes. First of all, you know, our main thrust, obviously, uh, is this media platform, and we've, we've we're now making a shift in the ministry focus from really from production to promotion. And uh, uh, next month, you can click into any of these uh, these uh, rectangle images. Romans nine one one talks launches in the spring. These are going to be. I've already done uh, a number of interviews. And they're uh, in the process of being edited. And uh, these are basically will drill down to two 30 minute interviews with 
various messianic and church leaders that are moving into the re restoration, the reconnection, and the alignment message. And I think this most probably is going to get the greatest amount of legs. Charisma is going to be promoting it for us. The same, so um, you'll be able to click into here and you'll see some of the leaders that we're going to be interviewing. Um, and um, um, as we begin to build this section, you'll see the different interviews that you'll be able to click in and watch on the website. Um, the same is true to say for uh, Romans 911 Project podcast. These are 10 to 20 minute audio messages that again, Charisma promotes with us on a weekly basis. And this is where I take a, a very small subject and I begin to focus on it and drill down. People can listen to this in the car. Um, and it's, uh, um, you know, different, you know, podcasts are, 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 are becoming or have be already become quite popular. And then, of course, um, the first Thursday of each month, we have the webinar focus. Um, and uh, here it, you have all the different messages you can, by clicking all the, the recordings, you can just click that and it will take you into the different months. And we always have the latest month posted up here for, for the actual webinar. Um, we, you'll see we're going to be really building out the testimonial and promotion page right right now. Right now, if, if we click into it, they're just a handful, but you will see over the next several months, there will be many uh, pr promotional uh, videos with different leaders, different sections of the study guide um, that you can easily share. You can click into and easily go onto your Facebook account and, and easily share those things. Uh, and this page will become much broader as the as the uh, as as we continue to develop this program. Of course, this is a click straight into uh, 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 books and videos where you can acquire the 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 books and the video teachings come free. I, you know, I just want to click. I want to show you how easy this is. If you go into my account, right, and I'm just going to put my email address in which you know as a user um and then my password and i sign in and right here are are the video teachings uh for internationals uh the book the study guide is now available as an ebook um, so that internationals, you know, can click in and and actually read the book online with the videos. But you can see when I click into the teachings, you've got messianic teachings and you've got Christian teachings. Um, when I click in, you've got part one here and you've got all the different teachings here. You can just click into them um, and and play. It's it's that easy. Um, and when when you acquire the uh, uh, the Romans nine one one study guide, you get the video teachings free. And we really encourage you, you know, not only to to look at these yourself, but also to to really um, engage in in groups in group study. And a number of you already on the call have already done that, and can really testify to um, just, the, just the transformation that comes from, and we really should, you know, in the next couple of months, I think we're, you know, we're just gonna invite people to share testimony on how these, this teaching platform has really helped to transform their thinking. And what basically happens is that these teachings go deep down into your, into your spirit and then you begin to, uh, to pray and, and you have just have a, a, a much keener sense of understanding of the things that we need to pray for the church and the rest of the body to come into it. 
but then also how to begin to communicate this message to others. And so we're going to be working um, with uh, our, our publisher who is going to be working uh, these next couple of years to really put together promotional campaigns to really get this message out there. And um, the same with Charisma Magazine. Uh, they really, really, they love our message. They, they understand its significance and the need to bring it forward. Um, and, they, and they give us a, a huge amount of free publicity, but we will be beginning to support that with uh, a deeper connection um, to promote the message and to, to really get it out there. Um, in addition to that, there are some amazing things happening in the body, aside from the fact that we are experiencing our first outpouring of the spirit. I think from all the prayer and repentance that has gone up in the last few years, you know, most of us know what's going on uh, in or what has gone on in Ashbury. It is actually a very significant meeting tonight that was planned uh, a, a lot, almost a year or two ago. Um, and that is related to really bringing this message, uh, bringing the, the fire to, to the, you know, college students. And already we're hearing, we're hearing reports that this awakening is, is beginning to spread into other colleges. And it's, it's, it's also interesting. There's a fantastic ministry, prayer ministry called Awakening the Dawn. Um, most of you most probably know about it, but it, it specifically, uh, focuses on setting up tents uh, around uh, tabernacles, but they have been working for the last several years to establish prayer tents in many college campuses around the country. And so um, I'm, you know, we heard just this morning of, uh, of, a, of, of an awakening happening at Yale University. So this fire is is beginning to catch and and you know it's interesting we let, let's let just think for a moment how much we have filled up the bowls in heaven in the last you know 2 to 3 years with prayer and intercession that has gone up for restoration and reformation to awaken the church and um and it's so exciting to see the Holy Spirit begin to move in the next generation. And so I really want to encourage you to continue to really pray into that, to fan the flame that this would spread to Generation Z all over uh, the U.S. and then throughout the nations in different college campuses. I mean, we are so desperate that, 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 that you know, we, we are in desperate need for awakening. And it, wouldn't it be wonderful to have hundreds of thousands of young men and women, you know, wanting and seeking to learn more about uh, how to move in, in, in God's end time plans. And of course, we know this message of restoration in the family is absolutely key and strategic to that. So just want to encourage us, us to, to, to really pray into that. In addition, I've been working behind the scenes for a couple of years. Um, if you've read chapter nine in Romans nine one one, it's it's about the, uh, the 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 apostolic roots of the church being restored. But in that chapter, and also in um, uh, the Romans nine one one study guide, uh, we talk about the 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 uh, the gifts of the of 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 the five fold and the significance for the for the you know for the for the church to begin to move in in a greater focus on all of these gifts and to hopefully get our egos and our pride out the way so that we can just allow the holy spirit to move more effectively through us and through the leadership, he raises up to equip the body for the works of the ministry. And um, very uh, um, in in that chapter, there's um, you know that we, we Rome, the Romans nine one one materials really introduce the messianic part of the family to the rest of the church. 
not just the leadership, but the different focuses, the different expressions. And in this chapter, we talk about the need for, for the leadership on both sides, for there, for there to be this corporate association, for the church in the nations to recognize that it, 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 it is to, you know, that the church is in alignment together with Israel. And so this restoration is not just about love and unity with us coming together individually, but is, there's also an, a corporate connection here. Um, and so we, uh, in, in January, uh, we held a meeting with uh, Gateway Church in Dallas, Texas, who, who were really kind enough to host this meeting. They did a fantastic job with us. And uh, we gathered a number of uh, messianic, most messianic leadership in the U.S. and a good amount from Israel attended that meeting, and many of the apostolic and prophetic voices in the church that are mo already moving into this message were um, were at that meeting, and something strategic happened out of that meeting towards the end. Um, the prayer movement is working on tw uh, twenty-one days of prayer and fasting up to uh, Shavuot, Pentecost. And uh, at the end of uh, that 21 days is a uh, focus, a day, 24 hours to pray for the salvation of Israel. And there, the prayer movement together, the IPC and the GO movement and IHOP in Kansas City and a number of other prayer ministries have been working tirelessly to mobilize millions and millions of intercessors that are going to be praying for the salvation of Israel on this day. And so I'm right now in the midst of, um, of working with other prayer leaders to put together, um, uh, to structure this day. And there's going to be, I think there's going to be some kind of a meeting in Jerusalem on that day. Um, with a great focus on reconciliation between Jewish and Arab believers and Jewish and Gentile believers, and then with our, all races and creeds, really a, 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 a focus on the re reconciliation in the family that could be, very well be, a Kairos moment um, and initiate something significant in the spirit that's going to um, really... Uh, continue this revival, that this awakening that the Lord is is leading us into. So, um, having said that, um, the uh, I felt uh, the other day I felt like the Lord prompted me to to uh, share a dream that I had. Some of you may have already heard this, but just to to remind you, I think it was a significant dream, not. Uh, last Christmas Hanukkah, but the Christmas Hanukkah before, and the Lord uh, showed me a dream of three mannequins. They were completely, they were mannequin heads on a table lined up one next behind the other. And they were, uh, they were uh, kind of bare, um, just, just the heads. Um, and in the dream, I was fighting with the Lord, uh, trying to uh, ask the Lord what the second and the third mannequins represented. And I knew in the dream that each of the heads were kind of like a, the position of where we're at with the ministry of, of the reconnection and the alignment in the family of God, different positions of, of the ministry focus. And I was arguing with the Lord and fighting with him, almost like uh, uh, the Lord with Jacob. You know, um, I just, uh, you know, I, the, we were going back and forth. I was like pulling on his shirts and, and you know, really saying, Lord, you got to show me. you got to show me what the second and the third mannequins represent. And the Lord would not uh, release that information to me. And um, all of a sudden I woke up and it was like one of those dreams. We, we know we all have them at certain points in our lives when God's trying to speak to us 
strategically about things. And I, I just went downstairs into my prayer chair and I started to seek the Lord uh, about the significance and the interpretation of the dream. And as I did that, immediately the Lord showed me um, an Afro, um, uh, Afro hair growing on the first mannequin. And as I inquired of the Lord what the Afro, the significance of the Afro was, the Lord um, gave me, immediately gave me an image of the British legal system. And of course, being a Brit, I'm familiar with it, but the legal system in, in England is quite different from uh, what it is in, in America. Um, in, in America, you basically have a lawyer that prepares documentation and then goes into the court to deliver the argument. In England, you have a solicitor who's a lawyer and the solicitor prepares the, the documents and the argument, but the barrister is the one who goes into court to deliver the appeal and the argument. And these barristers, including the judge, still have to wear these crazy Tory wigs, white wigs. In fact, I, I saw one on TV last week. I was on watching the BBC. And um, uh, so uh, um, um, immediately I, I had this sense from the Lord. And, and like I said, he wouldn't show me the second and the third position because we weren't ready for it. But what the Lord was basically saying, you know, was that, remember, the barrister goes into, into the court and he, his, his or her job is to win the day, to win the appeal, to win the argument. And beloved, I've shared this before, but this is where we are still are. And the reason why that I couldn't see the second or the third mannequin or the Lord wouldn't, wouldn't let me know what those positions were is because we're not ready for them yet. And so there's a, a need for us to understand where we are, but also to understand what we need to achieve. And I can tell you, working with, um, you know, uh, there is, we know that the Lord is unpacking this restoration in the one you man, but all of us that are moving into it have a, an understanding already that there's a great need to go deeper into it. But a lot of the people in the church are too busy or too distracted. And, um, you know, then when I work when I'm working with a lot of these prayer leaders that are focused on bringing the greatness of the gospel to the to the nations and reaching all the unreached nations and and um, and the large meetings and the um, just the great numbers that are involved in prayer and missions, of course, this restoration is very small. It's it's like it's somewhat of a paradox when you think about it, because the vastness of the gospel, the, the 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 largeness of the of the gospel has to be big. I mean, it's it's a billion soul harvest. Yet there's this restoration in the family of God that will ignite and and release the greater power on the on the harvest to the nations as we come into it. And we are realigned, but to to get the the body and even the leadership that is wanting to bless Israel to come into a place of 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 understanding and equipping and and beloved, I tell you, some people have said to me, you know, your your teachings for Romans nine one one, they're just there's too many hours, it's too long, and. Uh, I make no excuses for it because I want to share with you, beloved, and this is part of the argument we have to win. 1,700 years of the influences of replacement theology and mindset over the church is not going away overnight. And you yourself can testify uh, just being on this call for the year or two or three or four that you've been on it and how you've gone through the teachings and, and how the Lord has deepened your journey in it 
you are now looking at this restoration very differently than you did a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. And of course, it's not just about blessing Israel. In fact, the church is the salvific agent to release the mercy onto the Jewish people. So before the veil can come up from the people of Israel, the veil has to come up from the church. But it is going to take a good amount of prayer and intercession and love and patience for us to win this argument and to win the day. And we must be careful not to judge those, not to be critical. The Lord has showed us quite clearly. That's why he gave us the message of the two hands in Nehemiah, to love in the natural and contend in the spirit. But beloved, I want to tell you, we need to contend for those around us. We need to hear what's coming out of their mouths, how they're saying and thinking about this. Because I can tell you, so many leaders get revelation from the Israel piece, and then they look to slot it in with relevance, with other ministry focuses. And I tell you, beloved, that's a miss. It's a miss. And we know it's a miss because this is central. Israel is the apple of God's eye. This restoration is central to the plans of God to release the greater power on the rest of the body. And so there's a great need for the, for the church and especially for the leadership in the church who we need to press into for to get this revelation. And of course, the Lord's given me this, this uh, picture of you know the the computer right think of the computer this amazing machine with all the information that's in it you know the millions and millions and millions of uh little bytes and things and yet without the chip the intel chip which is tiny it can't function the way it's supposed to and of course we know that this restoration is like in a sense it's it's like that man or woman who recognizes the significance and they, you know, the Lord tells us the story of the great pearl. And, and, and so the man goes and digs and he owns, buys the land and he digs and he looks for that pearl, that pearl of, of great price. And we can make a comparison now, I think on, I mean, we know that that parable speaks of really of, of the, you know, the, the, the significance of, of the Lord himself and finding that jewel for ourselves. But we can make a comparison of this story with the significance of this message, but the need for the rest of the church and specifically for the leadership to understand that there is a cost to pay, that we need to dig. We, we you know, look at the reconnection mandate document once we come through the first three directives, which are to understand and to embrace the message and to come into a repentance, there's a renewing that takes place. Uh, Roman, you know, I love how Paul ends. I talk about this all the time. Romans 11, 32, Paul ends his dissertation with this scripture with, God has given all of us over to disobedience that he may have his mercy on us all. And when it comes to this restoration in the family, we're all in the same boat. We've all made mistakes, both Jew and Gentile alike. We all need to come into a place of repentance, but to receive that mercy. And isn't it interesting when you look at the word mercy in, in uh, chapter 12 of Romans, in the NIV translation, Paul says, in view of this mercy, that we are to offer our, our bodies and, and renew our minds, then we will know, then we will know. And so there's this place of mercy the Father's looking to release in and through us and to awaken the church to its great role to re reconnect spiritually 
and then to offer a supplication for Israel to come forth from a reunited bride. Those are the type of prayers the Father is looking for. We, and we need to pray the correct type of prayers in order for this to take place. But then, you know, isn't it clear from Romans 11 that the mercy we have received as a result of Israel's disobedience, that we would release that mercy back to them. Isn't that a directive to the church, not just to bless Israel, but to love them and to do our best to win them to faith, as Paul made the most of all his ministry to save some of his own people. And we know that the veil is coming up. It's a temporal veil. It comes up at the end, and so the veil needs to come up from the rest of the body now and, and come into this place of renewal. And that's going to take a little bit of time and study. So, um, beloved, we have a lot of good things to pray about. And so each uh, the, uh, on the last Thursday of each month, I'm going to be updating you a little bit on what we're doing and um, uh, with the different ministry focuses and some of the things that we need to pray into, along with having a sense of, of some of the one new man things that we're, we're talking about and need to pray into. So um, I want to, I'd like to, um, uh, I want to just give a few minutes for any, Q, any questions or comments um, and then let's let's move into uh, into some prayer. So if you have a question, just uh, go to the to the reaction button at the bottom and just raise your hand. Um, just give a few minutes to any comments or questions. Don't all rush to the microphone at once. <laughs> That's okay. If, just give another minute if anyone wants to comment or have a question. I'm sorry, I have a question, but I can't find a reaction button on my oh, phone. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead, Marjorie. Okay. Um, in terms of evangelizing or getting the gospel to the unreached, how can we um, uh, we when we evangelize, we teach from what we know um, currently. And so there is this gap between the Jews and the Gentiles. How can we bridge that gap as we are bringing new persons into the kingdom? Well, Marjorie, one of the first things we need to do is, I, you know, there are two types, I believe, two ways. I write about this in the Ezekiel Generation, my second book, chapter 11. There's a great chapter on, on evangelism to the Jewish people. There are two ways that we can reach out to the Jewish people. The first is most probably the most significant, and I call it lifestyle evangelism. And it's really to just get up close. If if you're living in a Jewish area or a neighborhood, or, or a, you're at a you know in a workplace, or just to get up close to one Jewish person, one Jewish family, and just love them. You know, the just the sheer numbers. Think of the sheer numbers. How many more Christians than there are Jews? Okay, if 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 we got a greater sense of this need to uh, to love the Jewish people, you can't evangelize the Jewish people the way we evangelize the Gentile world. So we have to learn how to bring the gospel to them. And we can't, you know, bang them over the head with the gospel either, because then, the, you know, it says it tells a story like, oh, you just want to convert me. No, 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 no. We want to help. We need to help build bridges for Jewish people to come back 
to their own olive tree, just the way that, that Paul describes it in Romans 11. And it's not that uh, difficult, beloved. There are, there's words and terminologies. We have to get rid of our Christianese. Remember that the Christian church has been used to persecute and kill the Jewish people. So the terms and uh, Christian things that are, uh, are near and dear to our hearts that we hold sacred, Jewish people have completely different sense to some of these things. And if you read my first book, The New Covenant Prophecy, you would get a real good sense of that. Um, because in, in, our, in our bloodline, we, we have this huge resistance to anything that's Christian because of all the things that have been done to us in the name of Christianity. So we have to learn uh, different terminology. And um, I, in, in the Ezekiel generation, I talk about heavenly windows and heavenly, heavenly doors. And, you know, when you build love and trust, love builds trust. And once you trust, once there's trust in the relationship, we, we can draw Jewish people to jealousy just by the fact that we have a relationship with God. And it's not one way. It's two way. If we're walking right with the Lord, you know, we're in a relationship with him and he's speaking to us. And this is how I was drawn to jealousy. The mistake we end up making is when we open our mouths to start to talk about faith, we start to tell them or try and bring them into the Gentile side of the tree, which has been used to kill and persecute them. So immediately you do that, the barriers go up. So you have to learn the right terminology, the right wording. And again, if you go on the website, uh, if you go into, um, here, let's do this. Hold on a second. Let me share screen again. If you go into the bookshop here, there's recommended readings. Let me click into it. These are all different books around the one new man, around Jewish ministry, Jewish evangelism, prayer and intercession. Um, there's a good description of each little book underneath it. Okay. Um, there is um, a really good book um, written by uh, Dr. Howard Morgan, Of Whom Do the Prophets Speak?, this will equip you with the right scriptures you can use, okay, to help Jewish people understand from their own scriptures. And when I was brought to faith, um, the, the young Christian girl that, that led me to the Lord, she knew all about the barriers. She knew about the obstacles. She learned the hard way by trial and error. So she never quoted New Testament. She only ever quoted Hebrew scriptures. She would speak the New Testament in her own converse, conversation to me. So she would use the New Testament in her conversation. Okay. Uh, but when she quoted, she always went back. She helped me understand that the that belief in Yeshua is the true and proper extension of Judaism. She helped build a bridge for me that I was returning to my own olive tree. And beloved, that's what we have to learn to do. And we have the Holy Spirit. He's a great teacher. And we learn often by trial and error and making mistakes, but we need to be willing. And so when you have love and trust, um, suddenly, uh, a door will open and that Jewish person will suddenly ask you, you know, and it may last for five minutes. It could last for 30 seconds. OK, but then there's an opportunity to plant the word of God. And I'm telling you, beloved, we're coming into a time where the world is we're already seeing an increase in anti-Semitism more and more and more. of The world is going to turn against the Jewish people as it is turning against us, both of us, actually. And there are going to be more and more opportunities. And so it's, it's important for us to learn. But 
The, the second aspect of evangelism is power evangelism. How did, how did Yeshua minister to the Samaritan woman in a moment with a, with a word of knowledge? He was able to speak right to her heart. And sometimes if we move, you know, in the power of the Holy Spirit, um, you know, the Lord can open up doors for us that cut really cut right through, you know, um, and penetrate. And, and we have to be open to that, too. But most of the time, it's about love and building trust. But then having the willingness to speak up. We have parts of the body, beloved. Parts of the great parts of the Christian evangelical church thinking that it's 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 anti-Semitic to bring the gospel back to the Jewish people. I mean, that's crazy. So um, Paul would have considered himself what? For the sake of his own. So um, and he made the most of of his ministry, the very apostle to the Gentiles. So there's adjustments and modifications there's blindness that needs to get removed from the church as they come into this restoration so i hope uh, marjorie that helps answer some of your questions um i think at this point um let's move into 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 prayer uh, i'd like to invite a number of us to pray into the media platform for Romans 911. We're going to do that. We're going to pray into this new day on um, um, on um, the 28th of May, uh, which could be a strategic moment for the body as it comes into its restoration. And then I'd like us to pray for more watchmen to come into the message. So hallelujah. I want to encourage you, you know, at this point, rather than can I, can I can, would you allow me just to call on each of you? and invite you to pray into the different focuses. Could we do that? That would be great. So I'm going to start with uh, with Audrey. Audrey, would you would you pray into one of, of the media, Romans 911 media platforms? One of the, the media platforms? Oh, wow. I know that um, I, I listen to a, a lot of podcasts, and I... And I also have a lot of friends who uh, seem to be open to podcasts and all of the platforms are um, different aspects, different ways that people read, uh, tapping into social media. And I, Lord, I pray, especially specifically for the podcast, the Lord, that uh, that there would be an audience that would uh, all of a sudden they would uh, find themselves listening and uh, and gravitating and e and even a curiosity would start welling up within them. They may not even understand what this is all about, but somehow they find themselves listening, and um and questions start to arise in their spirits and in their hearts. Open up those doors, and I pray for uh, ways and means for those podcasts to go out to be distributed, to be um, in uh, different platforms. Uh, Lord, to open doors, open doors, oh God, uh, uh, around the uh, for especially around the world, oh God, not just in a, in the United States, but in other countries as well. That that the word shall go forth. That this reconnection message shall go forth. And and grab and pull the hearts in, pull the minds and the spirits in, Lord, as they listen to this, Lord, that um, it would start making sense to them, and and our and start putting making uh, putting questions in their hearts and in their spirits. Like I never thought about that before, but we need to know. We need to know. Open doors, open doors around the world, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, Audrey. You know, Romans 911 Talks is, I think, going to have the greatest legs to the media platform. Sue Palmer, you with us? Yeah. Could you pray into that for us? You need to unmute. Yeah. Um, you were, we're, we're talking about just different ways that the Romans 911 project is, is reaching out. Is that what you're asking us to Pray into. Can you pray specifically into the Romans 911 talks? These are going to be the interviews with the different leaders. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Father God, we just, first of all, we just thank you, Father God, for opening doors, Lord, for these interviews to take place, Lord, with, with these leaders, Lord. Father, we ask that you would um, ignite Grant and Hallie, um, as, the, as they conduct these interviews, Father, that you would even give them 
uh, the right questions to ask, Lord, to, 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 um, that you would allow these uh, interviews to just flow uh, freely and by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would ignite hearts, that you would open hearts, Father, as these interviews take place, as these talks, these conversations happen, Father, may they be just, uh, just blessed by, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. May they be even Emmaus Road moments, Lord, where, where eyes are open, hearts are open, revelation happens, Father God, for these leaders, God, that they might just be transformed by these talks. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Angela, if you could pray into an expansion of the uh, Roman uh, number one yeah. webinar um, that that uh, others would come to uh, commit to, to studying and talking about this restoration. Uh, we thank you that it's truly a work of the spirit. And Lord, we can see the hardness of the hearts uh, in the European continent, um, especially as we pray into these areas. Father, I pray for an opening of the uh, Romans 911 uh, webinar project across the globe, Lord, that you would um, bring about, Lord, a curiosity and a willingness um, for people to engage and commit. Lord, we know that commitment in this day is the most difficult thing to receive and to, to witness in people. Uh, in this instantaneous world we live in, there's no commitment anymore, Lord. And so we ask you to uh, stir up commitment to those who have uh, have uh, decided to to dig deep into this um, reconnection. And so, Father, we just pray for grace and your your commitment to us to be our commitment to you. And to your people in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Anyone else that'd like to pray into the media platform? Just have a couple of others. Alexis, would you like to pray into that? Still need to unmute. Sorry, I missed that. We were speaking and in, praying into a specific point or generally. Yes. Yes, what? Generally. Yes. Yeah, just generally into the media okay. platform. Right. Okay. Right. Father, we just want to bless you and thank you for this project. Lord, it's just an amazing thing. We thank you, Father, for the just the availability of it. We thank you, Father, particularly the study guide and the and the um, videos that go along with them. Thank you, Father, for how you've gathered folk in, in the United Kingdom, Lord, to actually want to study it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing and excited about it, Lord. And we just pray, Father, that this, this uh, little, little group will be replicated across the nations, Lord, that there would be an opening of hearts and minds and spirits to want to know the truth, Lord, about the whole one new man uh, heart that you have, Lord. So I just pray, Father, in these days that this, these books, these tapes, these podcasts and everything else that's on the website, Father, it would just open a whole array of uh, hearts that really see that there is something here absolutely crucial for the body to hear and to act upon lord we pray for your holy spirit to so anoint this work lord every single one of these things that grant was showing us tonight we pray they would be so anointed lord that when people open them up and look at them they just father see that this is such an essential end time message that has to be heard not just heard, Lord, but responded to. And I just pray this in the mighty name of Yeshua. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Antoinette. Hallelujah. Uh, Alexis, sorry. Antoinette, would you like to pray? 
Um, yes, thank you. Father, uh, we just come before you and um, Lord, apart from you, we can do nothing. And we, we just um, lift up our eyes to you, Lord, and say, um, unless you build the house, Lord, we labor in vain and the watchman watches in vain. But Lord, we come to you at a time such as this, where darkness is increasing. And you have said, Lord, that as the darkness increases, so will the light. So we cry out to you for uh, that outpouring of your Holy Spirit to release revelation Lord, into this vital message of the end of the family of God, the res restoration in the family of God. Father, we ask you to unlock and to open doors across the, all the media platforms, Lord, that this, um, this message, Lord, will go uh, beyond people's understandings, uh, Lord, that you would begin to, uh, Lord, lift the veil of the eyes of the church in particular, Lord, to, to see, uh, Lord, that the, the restoration of Israel and the, the antagonism in the world against Israel is part of the end time strategy that you have, Lord, to, to prepare the bride. So, Father, we ask you to release revelation into the leadership in particular, Lord. We ask you, as you did with Lou Engel, to release dreams, visions, Lord, the gifts of your spirit are uh, so essential in the body. So we ask you, Father, that in all these things, you would uh, have mercy uh, upon us and release that spirit of intercession into the body into your church, Lord, at this time, in Yeshua's name. Yes, amen. Amen. Gunny and Harriet, you with us? Yeah, we're here. Gunny, you're very familiar with the need for the Messianic and the church leadership to come together. Would you, would you just uh, uh, pray for us about that issue? Father, we thank you <clears throat> that you are raising up a messianic body that has understood its call to be understood and returned back to you as, as God through Yeshua, Messiah. And we thank you for the 17, 1800 years of Christianity spreading throughout the globe. Now is the time, Lord, when you, when you, when what you hold Abraham is true, that through him, all the nations would be blessed. And that happens, Lord, as the one new man is, is revealed and, and functional here in this earth. So we pray, Lord, for Messianic leaders and, and Gentile leaders, all of whom love Yeshua or love Jesus, that they would come together and understand and get a download from your Holy Spirit about the importance of working together for the spread of the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And we pray, Lord, that we, we, we specifically pray, Lord, against those who think that all of this means that Gentiles have to become Jews, or those who think that all of this means Jews have to become Gentiles, both of whom are wrong. So we pray that these two expressions of your body would unite together for the spreading of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Marjorie, would you uh, pray for us about evangelism, lifestyle, love and witness to, to re be released from the church to the Jewish people. Sure. Hallelujah. Lord, we are so grateful that you have included us in 
what your plans are for this world. We thank you, Lord, that there is harvest and that the harvest includes the apple of your eye, the Jewish people. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, for your people. That, Lord, you will open our eyes to truth, to, to strategies, to to the uniqueness, even as um, Grant explained about the, with the language um, that you will guide that Lord, that you will guide as, as you guide our thoughts, then our actions will represent you and the lifestyle will be illuminated. Mm -hmm. Your word says, Father, that when we lift you up, you draw men. So I pray, Father, that as believers, we will lift you up. We will lift you up in our lifestyle, in our language, in, in just how we exist as representing your kingdom, so that indeed you will be able to draw the Jewish people in particular as, as we pray now for them. And we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, the anointed one. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Marjorie. It's such a needed prayer right there. We could just remember each day or as each week goes by to lift up the church to awaken most probably the greatest unreached people group in the world are the Jewish people for the gospel. So um, uh, just the need for, for Jewish evangelism to, to, to be released again. And it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. We know it's coming. We know that veil is temporal. Well, beloved, thanks for, for uh, tracking with us. And um, if, if you haven't connected with us, um, please go on the website and sign up so you can get the, the emails. We're also in process of, of narrowing down our email distribution because we're also bombarded with emails e e these days. I can't believe certain ministries that actually send us emails every day. Uh, we're working just to send two or three emails a month. Um, to, to reorganize uh, uh, that. Next week, beloved, we have uh, the webinar next Thursday, which is right after this call. And we are talking about the blindness over Israel and the blindness over the church and how it gets removed. So I want to encourage you to join us. And also, um, it starts with us. Help uh, connect with other, your friends, uh, people in your churches, you know, to engage and, and to join us. And, and guess what? As we begin to hand off the, uh, to the next hour now to, to Bob and Terry, we are actually, we have some great news for everyone. On uh, April 6th, uh, which is the second night of Passover, we are joining, Bob and I uh, are joining with uh, Bob and Terry, and we are going to have a Passover celebration. We're joining our two hours together and we are going to celebrate the Passover, but it's going to have a slightly different focus. I think most of you know by now they're on this call, all the different elements of the Passover. We are going to, we're going to focus on, on um, uh, explaining the fulfillment of the gospel through the Passover story and really sharing Yeshua through it, but also teaching Christians to be able to share. The best time of year to share the gospel with Jewish people is through the Passover story of itself. And that's one of the things we're gonna be doing. So we wanna encourage you to uh, pray about inviting your Jewish friends, but also invite your Christian friends because we're gonna learn how to explain the gospel through the Passover story. I was involved in some missions in the former Soviet Union in the 1990s, and that's exactly what we did. So at this point, uh, I want to hand over to, to Bob and Terry.
and uh, thank everyone for being on this call and a blessing to you, uh, Bob and Terry, as you move into your hour. I have to run off, so uh, I've got to get on to another meeting. Hallie is going to um, turn the recording off and, and uh, switch over hosts. So lots of love to everyone. Okay. Blessings Wonderful. on you, Grant. Blessings. God bless you, oh, Grant. I, I, had to, I had to laugh when Grant 